Joining us this morning to discuss the state's budget deficit moving forward is author and KUSI political contribu contributor, Mr. Tom Del Beccaro. Good morning, Tom. How are you, and where is Gavin Newsom? It's been four days of violence in California, and no one seems to know where he is. All right, well, before we get to that topic, and I'll, and I'll let you pick up on that, I'm being roundly criticized on social media for asking the same question as it relates to the president. Can we start there, and then we'll work our way down to the governor? Where is President Trump? We, you're right. I mean, there is. he has said that the Antifa would be treated as a terrorist, but there is a lot of criticism out there for his response so far, some saying that his invective is too much and others saying he's not doing enough right now. There, of course, was this concern yesterday about violence around the White House. So, yeah, there is – that's an open question as well. It hasn't been four days, though. All right. Fair enough. I'll let you swing to the governor. I just think that uh, I'd rather have my president on live TV than down in the bunker. But I digress. Let's talk about the governor. It's been four days, and we still – What? how do you read that, the, the governor's silence? Um, I, there's no kind words I can use at this moment. Look, what is going on in California cannot be acceptable. I watched this morning. It, you know, I had to empty out part of my office of computer systems and the like yesterday because the protests, the looting was right literally across the street from my office. And now there's a big demonstration, peaceful, that's about two blocks away to set to happen today. You saw the Oakland governor, the, I'm sorry, mayor this morning, demanding from people, if you have video regarding the looters, where is it? At least she is speaking out. It's not acceptable for Gavin Newsom to be apparently on vacation for four days and not making statements condemning this violence and demanding that it stop. All right, well, maybe that changes today. Uh, if not, we will talk. That'll be my first question to you the next time we chat. But let's talk about money. We were in a mess before COVID-19. We were in a, almost an undiggable mess after when COVID-19 ends. Now you throw in the uh, social unrest. Uh, is California, is, is the deficit, can you have a deficit so big you can't get out of it? Well, look, back, way back in April 3rd, I first wrote about this at Fox, the coming crisis to the states. And I talked about the fact that, that you shouldn't bail these blue states out because it's just encouraging them to be irresponsible. And now here we are, uh, how many, almost two months later, and it's really starting to hit home. At the, you saw the California Senate pass a bill where they actually gave pay raises, not pay cuts to government officials. So when you hear this, we're all in this together, no, not certain government workers. And the reality is that California is going to have to reduce the size of government because it's not going to get bailed out for, for everything that it's doing. And they're going to have to be responsible. It's just like everyone else who's had to cut back. And so will this take time? Yes. Are they going to have to borrow money? Yes. But they shouldn't can increase the budget like the Senate would like to see. Oh, God, good luck with that one, Tom. Uh, the president needs the economy roaring for his reelection cha chances. California and New York State are big parts of that equation. Do those governors have leverage over the president as it relates to the federal bailout negotiation that, hey, we're not going to reopen until you come up with a figure that helps cover some of our costs. And if that's the case, are we the peeps? Are we being held hostage between two political factions? Yes, in a, in a sense. Look, the, the, the reality is for New York and California, their governors continue to, to do this to the harm of their own people. Does that help the, the economy nationwide? No. Does it hurt the president? Not as much as you think. Because Democrats have, have cast themselves as the party of the shutdown, while Republicans are party uh, opening up. Trump's not going to win California. He's not going to win New York. But he can win Michigan. And I think he's Florida and Ohio already off the board. Those are normal swing states. But they, those are doing well because Republican governors have managed it well. So I actually, I, at this point, I think it isn't the fact that California and New York are continuing to shut down is harming the Democrats more than the Republicans. All right, fair enough. As it relates to what is going on in our
our streets right now. Uh, again, I was right, roundly criticized for saying there is a third faction involved. You have the protesters who are justifiably and repeatedly protesting what with incidents like George Floyd were police misconduct and unlawfulness have resulted in these wide protests. But there's also this faction of professional looters, and they are tainting the protesters, in my opinion. Do you agree with that assessment? A hundred percent. Anyone who doesn't think that this is coordinated is missing the picture, and this is why Antifa is going to now be treated, at least for the remainder of this presidency, as a terrorist organization. I posted on Facebook yesterday the the picture that, that they post where you tear off and call a phone number and it's a live phone number. This didn't just happen all across the country magically. Bricks weren't delivered to certain areas magically. I've read the Antifa Twitter posts about the damage they want to do to, to where I live. There's no question. Look, the mayor of San Francisco says that these are outside people getting involved. Same in Minnesota, same in Seattle, same in Oakland. So if all those Democrat mayors can say that, you know it's got to be true. The top, what, what is the, the play there? Who benefits from the social upheaval, the social unrest? I, I mean, that sounds like an outside agency. That sounds like, like a, an adversary of co like country like Russia or China. Look, I, I've, been, I've been a historian for a long time now, reading history for literally four decades. The socialist agenda is to create chaos and then demand more order in the face of that chaos. That is as old as time. It went all the way back to ancient Greece, Rome as well. That is their style. You create chaos and they sell socialism as the alternative to chaos. George Soros group and, and certain Democrats in, around the country in power they want more socialist government, if not an outright socialist government. How do you get that? You create chaos and then say the only answer to this chaos is government control. All right, let it be noted by the viewers that you brought up George Soros. I did not. <laughs> I'll, I'll explain later, Tom. All right, we will have, uh, uh, we'll, we'll see you again down the road, and we appreciate your time. We'll have more Good Morning San Diego.